Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview. My name is Joseph. I've got a couple questions for you. When you woke up this morning, did you think that you'd click on this video later today and that we'd meet and spend this wonderful time together? When you were little, did you ever think that one day, many years later, you'd be eating an apple for breakfast and then watching this video on your phone? Do you think that things happen just by coincidence? Or is there an invisible force that connected you and me and everything else around us? At this point, some of you are probably thinking that I'm going to be talking about predestined relationships or reincarnation stories today. But actually, I wanted to talk to you about a famous theory in the field of science that gives theoretical scientists a headache when they dwell on it. The theory is called Laplace's intellect, also known as Laplace's demon. The French mathematician Pierre-Simon Laplace introduced the theory of Laplace's intellect around 200 years ago. Laplace was a great scientist who predicted the existence of black holes a hundred years ahead of Einstein. He also predicted another profound existence in this universe, Laplace's intellect. What is Laplace's intellect? Laplace said, We may regard the present state of the universe as the effect of its past and the cause of its future. An intellect which at a certain moment would know all forces that set nature in motion, and all positions of all items of which nature is composed. If this intellect were also vast enough to submit these data to analysis, it would embrace in a single formula the movements of the greatest bodies of the universe and those of the tiniest atom, for which an intellect nothing would be uncertain and the future, just like the past, would be present before its eyes. What does it mean in plainer words? The assumption is that there's a powerful intellect that knows the present state of all matter in the universe. Knowing the present state of each atom, this intelligence can use the law of physics to determine the motion of each atom. Theoretically, this intelligence can determine where the atoms would be the next second. Then, the position of all atoms in the second, third, and fourth second can also be determined. That is to say, the future of everything in the world could be determined. In the same way, the past can also be calculated from the present. If so, everything's path has already been set from the motion of the universe that was born 13.8 billion years ago to the present day, and even up to the day of its destruction. Note that this is not theology, but was deduced through the theory of cause and effect, which is one of the building blocks of science. Assuming that it's valid, then everything in this world was set and determined at the moment of the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago, including your birth and this video that you're now watching. It has nothing to do with your will or desire. It's not about you wanting to watch this video today, but that a long time before you were born, 13.8 billion years ago, the explosion of the universe decided that you would definitely be sitting here today watching this video. Of course, what you eat, what you wear, who you marry, how many years you live in this life, how much money you can earn, were all decided at the time of that explosion. But people may think that their mood and preferences determine the food they want to eat and the clothes they choose to wear. They have the ability to change and decide that, right? Well, according to the theory of cause and effect, your decisions still wouldn't change. For example, you opened this program a few minutes ago. Let's say we turn back the clock to the second before you clicked on this video. Let's turn the clock back on the whole world, your memory, your mind, and everything to their states at that moment. Would you still click on this video? You would definitely still click on it. We often say, if I could turn back time, I would not do this or I would not do that. But in fact, if you turn back time, revert everything back to where it was, your mood would also revert to what it was at that moment, and you still wouldn't change your decision. In other words, everything that happens in your timeline is actually caused by a certain reason. And if this reason doesn't change, then the result wouldn't change. If you keep tracing back to the original reason, when would you stop? You'd stop at the Big Bang, presumably. So from the moment of the Big Bang, it was confirmed that today you'd click on this video. At the moment of that singularity, all of the atoms flew in different directions at various speeds and transformed. The direction and speed of each atom eventually determined the formation of the galaxy, the Earth, the birth of mankind, and the birth of you and me. The initial explosion of the universe determined all of the things that are happening now. Therefore, the future is inevitable. Okay. So is there anything that happens in this world that is probabilistic and not inevitable? For example, if we toss a coin, the probability of heads versus tails is 50% each. Isn't that just a matter of probability? According to this theory, in fact, it is not. When the coin is tossed, if the speed and rotation angle of the coin are determined, 
then the face it lands on can theoretically be calculated. The end result would be a definite fact, not probability. Then why do we think that it's probability? It's because our brain can't perform this calculation. We don't know enough information. We view the movement of the coin as random, but in fact it has a pattern, and probability is likely just an illusion we made up. So the future can be predicted, but can it be changed? That's a key question. In fact, it's the most controversial point about Laplace's intellect theory. Let's suppose that we use a supercomputer, or a more powerful quantum computer, to collect a bunch of data and make a bunch of calculations. Afterwards, it's found that you will rob a bank in three days, so the supercomputer immediately reports this to the police, who arrest you and detain you so that you can't commit the robbery. But a problem arises here. If you're detained, the fact that you committed a crime will no longer exist, so why should you be arrested? This shows the prediction and change are unable to exist at the same time. This is the contradiction that exists in the theory of Laplace's demon. Since it has such a contradiction, many scientists suspect that Laplace's demon theory is fundamentally wrong. So more than 200 years later, people tried to use various theories to explain just where it went wrong. For example, some people use the very famous butterfly effect to explain that Laplace may be wrong. The butterfly effect was proposed by the famous meteorologist Edward Lorenz. He said that a butterfly fluttering its wings in South America might cause a tornado one month later in Texas. In other words, it is impossible to have a perfect calculation in reality, and any little error may cause a very big change in future results. But the butterfly effect was proven to be unable to overthrow Laplace's demon. Why? Well, because the butterfly effect only illustrates that it is difficult to predict a future problem, but it is not impossible to predict. It's just that calculation technology isn't advanced enough yet. But if our computers are advanced enough in the future, then calculations can become very accurate and the future can be predicted. It'll just take some effort. It was impossible for people to predict the weather a long time ago, but this has gradually become more and more accurate which shows that the increase in computing power may eventually lead to the existence of Laplace's demon in real life. Some people use quantum mechanics to deny Laplace's theory, while others use thermodynamics. Many attempts are made to explain how it would be impossible to predict the future. But even today, we actually still know very little about quantum mechanics or thermodynamics. We can't use one poorly understood theory to overthrow another poorly understood theory. Therefore, Laplace's demon is only a deeply doubted theory to this day, not an overturned one. When speaking of all of this, there may be viewers who think that this Laplace's demon sounds a bit familiar. If this wise man can accurately depict the past and future of all life in the universe, isn't this the omnipotent god in theology? Perhaps, and maybe this is the reason why the scientific community calls it a demon, because once it exists, it will cause big trouble for science. The current scientific system would collapse because it would be equivalent to deriving a god from scientific theories. In my opinion, the scientific and theological circles are talking about the same topic, but under different names. Perhaps as science becomes more and more advanced and things discussed in theology and spiritual circles that were considered to be very mysterious and inexplicable in the past will finally prove to be true. It's just like how when quantum mechanics first came out back then, everyone thought that it was ridiculous. Well, many scientists wanted to prove it wrong, including Einstein. But in the end, it was proven to be correct. So scientists had to explore a new stream of science, quantum mechanics, to explain it. I believe that there's a creative intelligence, an interconnected life force, that has existed all along. Perhaps it's this that humans have been seeking to understand all along. This also reminds me of what Robert Jastrow, the pioneer of the American space program, once said. As the scientist pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. What are your thoughts on today's topic? Please leave a comment below, I love reading them. Okay, that's all for today's show. I'll see you next time.